Hey there, my fellow surgeons, Radamon here. Thank you for tuning in to RimWorld Death of the Isle, episode 27, Three of Hearts. Can I quickly go over how the kill box works? Sure. Um, so all of the doors to the colony. So the first, first thing is when um, attackers attack, other than breachers uh, and sappers, what they will do is they will path to your colonists. Technically, they like attack, move towards your beds, but all right, that's besides the point. So, in order to um, in order to funnel attackers, you need to leave an open path. So, when attackers enter this map tile, there's an open path here where they can attack me. So they'll be moving towards this spot. And the way this kill box works is, I put my archers in here and shoot them. If they get close enough to this door, I can open this one and close this one. They might attack this slab door, but it has 545 hit points. And once they get bored of that, they will move over to this slab door. And in order to attack that slab door, they'll have to move from here around the deep water because you can't deep water is not walk pathable. So they'll have to move around the deep water over to this door right in front of all of my archers. So that's essentially how the kill box works. And then if we do want them to come in, if we want them to actually enter, we can leave the door open and let them walk, closing this door and and um, this door, let them walk to this spot where um, their male layers can attack. Their male well, actually, I need to make some improvements here. So this is actually one of the ways I can make improvements. Where we want to whittle down their numbers so they attack one male layer at a time, where we defend with three male layers at a time. Um, for a home advantage, if you will. So Tal, how about you? Oh, right, I did the leader speech. Um, so the last part of this, which I hadn't done, is I want castle walls like uh, this, where um, they're funneled and we can defend with greater numbers and they can't. And I'm, I'm making it out of uh, castle walls, so it's really tough, so that it doesn't get destroyed. The other part of this is um, probably smooth this area out. And then also, I don't care about the floors, but I might want to smooth the walls around here so that if the walls take incidental damage from uh, random bow fire or whatever that we can repair the walls that are part of the defenses which is a lot of smoothing but you know that would be improving the defenses so that's how it works it's essentially just exploiting deep water mechanics So you, little friend, have a resistance of zero, and you are soon to become an ice mage. So we have a spare uh, arcane mage scroll, which we'll use when we have another. Um, so now that uh, I've sort of highlighted the remaining work to be done for the deep water defenses, uh, what should be next? And I think we're also getting here we go. Hi, J Fry. So, no armor, social drugs, medicine. Uh, do you have a bedroom? You don't. Take off that clothing. You don't need iron or slave clothes. Weird. And you are going to learn Ice Mage. Here we go. So getting the full tome teaches you a little bit of everything. Uh, so going over their skills. Soothing Breeze. Soothing uh, aura uh, around the caster that periodically buffs allies for consciousness, mood, and reduction of rest and pain. And I am going to channel that. So that he, there's a soothing order around him 
which um, makes others happy because we've been having some. Oh, we've been having some mental breakdowns. Uh, GFI will need a bow and quiver as well. I should come up with like a standard um, uh, equipment as I as I mentioned before. Silden, you have had her travel wear. So, Jfry, you're going to um, sit this battle out. Let the actually equipped people handle it. Um, and then the other abilities. I Ice Bolt, pretty straightforward. Snowball, massive snowball, damages a large area. And Frost Ray is a... You know, I'll try to have... So, one of the advantages of an Ice Mage is... Um, they cause a lot of hypothermia damage and can incapacitate enemies without killing them. So it's also going to be very handy for him to be joining in on this fight. And Scorpio, thanks for all the gifted subs. Cheers. So my guests here got ganked by the Gondorians. We have got a woodsman with a sword. So he's like a drunk woodsman. I think that's it. No one else here is special. What are you doing here? Do you even have gear? Wait, what? You're frail. What? I'm so confused. What? They have no weapon. They showed up with nothing. Wait, what? Denny Zitro, are you going to punch me to death? Like, I'm sorry. Do you, uh, well, actually, there's two of you that are like that. I don't understand. They showed up with a like, random villagers. Uh, so Strong here got knocked out. He's probably going to die because he's dead in three hours. But uh, yeah, let's let's try to identify before we actually start this fight. Is there any that I would want as a colonist? Or a slave, for that matter. Lord, not really. Maybe Carol Bird. Maybe beautiful bloodlust and gay. I could live with that. The thing is, like these guys don't have good combat. So oh, here, James is a jogging shooter. Uh, I could that. That's all right. Most of these guys just like have trash stats. He's physically adept, um, but they're a slow learner. So, oh, and they're also unwaveringly loyal. Uh, the first one I checked had industrious great memory, but the thing is, like, they're not um, fight skilled at all. Yeah, most of them are trash. I get honestly, I don't care. I just if they survive, we might harvest hearts. I think this is more like let's get hearts off of them. All right, so J Fry, you have your quiver too? No, you did not pick up your quiver. You're just getting drunk off of wine. All right, I didn't give you a quiver. Uh, so come join this fight. I don't know how long the uh, Bill Shadows lasts, but Madzie's here just sort of lurking. Looking to like pummel strike a few of them off the fight. Didn't really do much damage. Uh, you'll level up. Alright, so you are now revealed. Let's blink here. Have you pommel strike the ones in back? Oh, good. You didn't even pommel strike. You just knocked them out. Oh, and there's a map. Oh, because they're demented with asthma. Uh, yep. 
near 97 years old. Why, why are you sending me your, like, ancient people to fight me? This is... It's like insulting to my, uh, my, my combat talents. Rip. And they're running. So Madzi's like sort of chilling here. Shield can get back in it. You guys can approach uh, Tal. Actually, drop a defensive pylon here. So we've got we got some targets. This dude is um, unwaveringly loyal, so they're they're a good heart donor. Uh, Guero. Uh, no, never mind. Guero, you move real slow. Uh, turnip. Go capture the young teenager who showed up in the wrong neighborhood. Pommel strike. Good, that one worked. Um, hmm. Applying nightshade coating and going after Dan. Dan the frail man. Oh, watch out! You're gonna hit Madzy. Alright, y'all are fired. Except for Turnip. You keep capturing. Read the map. I have no idea what that map revealed. Uh, so we've got Yatsu here, 20 hours and 8 hours. And then Strong over here that we can actually heal up. I guess Tal never bothered to, like, enter the fight. But, uh, let's try to 10 strong. And as uh, you can see, I'm still hunting them with Madzi. I, a summon is only for items, I believe. It does not work for people. Oh, Yatsu got back up. And he's dead. Okay, I'm going to capture Yatsu myself then. But, uh, yeah, that's not a terrible fight. So this is supposed to be for J-Fry. The bed has to be, like, centered or whatever. And then the rest of these guys are just organ donors, whoever else gets captured. So, Madzi, go for Bernard before he gets up. And then Tal is tending to our dead or downed guest. Came to visit and got ganked. So scribing and magic circles is what you guys wanted once the defenses are done. Copy that. Not bad. Two more hearts. How many? We have one heart. So this will give us an Orb of the Eternal, hypothetically, if we can get hearts from both victims. Uh, let's take a look at him. So actually, the beautiful Bloodlust and Gay did get captured, but he's 97. So I don't think he's going to make for a good recruit. And the other one is a 16-year-old tortured artist. Um, are we heart harvesting both? And if you're wondering, I'm choosing not to harvest other organs because I don't want to try to make a profit off of organ harvesting as like organ transplants aren't a thing in Lord of the Rings and they're not going to become a mainstay of my economy as a result. I'm, this is a role playing series, lest you not forget. So harvesting kidneys and livers is weird because that's just not what, what I'm about. I did get YouTube comments of like, you can make more money. It's like, yes, but like, that's not the theme of the series is the organ harvesters of the Tofalis Islands is not what we're about, even a little bit. 
So just 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 reminding everyone, I suppose. All right, that is J Fry's quiver. Wow, is that the? Oh no, no, it's lit. Okay. Um. Hmm. Oddly enough, let's see. I think I'm going to have J Fry attempt for like a very subduing snowball so that when I cast snowball, I hit lots because it does low damage, but it is it's a good incapacitator, I think. But here's the, oh, classy wine. <laughs> uh, we have, does anyone even have the bonus from J Fry Soothing Breeze? Oh yeah, here we go. Uh, Nabla has it. So Soothing Breeze, reduction in pain, increase of consciousness, reduction in tired, and then also a plus two. And it could get stronger, of course, uh, through, through, uh, through training and we're harvesting both their hearts got it let me just do that now tell you up hey Karth thank you for the resub Sauron and his crew are doing well Sorry, Crimson, I don't want you to do in the surgery. So, uh, who is benefiting from this? Uh, we can recover Crimson's peg leg or Guero's peg leg. Who to heal? So Crimson, of course, is our like main ranger uh, and move speed matters a lot. Guero, however, is body squeamish and would lose uh, a minus 10 mood modifier. There's an argument to be made for one, the other, both, and uh, you guys can vote. You guys pick. This is looking good. So it doesn't cast weird shadows. I'm just going to roof up this whole area. The pommel strike did work, which was nice. Hey, buddy. And an arcane raider camp. A whole bunch of elves protecting a little bit of magic potions. Oh, and an Ur Sight Label detected. Uh oh. Ur Sight Label. <laughs> Better be cautious. The Ur Sights are coming for me. So silly.
Well, Strong, you're missing a leg and a hand. And, uh, not much I can do for you about that. Here's Thomas making an orb of the Eternal. Drawing on the batteries. And we got it. And it looks like Guero's winning out. Now my only worry here is that there's a non-zero chance that it heals Guero's pinky finger. And I mean, it would make me upset, but it would also be hilarious because us necromancers, we're not good, uh, we're not good, good healers. So I, there would be some role playing involved uh, if we healed the wrong thing. So administer Orbit of the Eternal. Here we go. His leg was restored. Okay. No longer body squeamish. Good. So you guys wanted me to describe some, some things. Um, so the first thing I'm going to ask is, should I set up a magic freezer? with J-Fry. So that would be scribing the magic cooler spell, um, which is uh, here, uh, which acts as like a, it acts as like a passive cooler that goes below freezing, uh, which would be a good way to preserve our meat so that we wouldn't have to dry the meat out because that's what we've been doing. So I would stop, I would destroy the meat racks and uh, go that route instead. Oh, and there goes Strong. Bye, Strong. Good job not succumbing to your injuries. Tell Agmar, Angmar that um, I'm sorry that you and your friends got ganked and spanked. I'm also just improving the area over here um, so that it's prettier for the mines. setting up um, mass production of coal. It also might make sense given the uh, quantity of fertile soil that I have and the fact that I can just like make more of it to create paths around here. The other idea was to wall in the Devil Strand, which we might end up doing. It depends on uh, atmospheric conditions. Oh my God, I have so many weapons. Is there any smeltable weapons? I'm going to assume there's no smeltable weapons that I care about. I'm going to start uh, getting rid of the backlog of weapons. We just have a bunch of Gondorian garbage weapons everywhere. And you guys want J-Fry to be our magic freezer. Okie dokie. I don't care who scribes it. This room is... I'll try to cool down this room, but it's probably too big. So what I'm probably going to have to do is to modify it so that it's smaller. And then any mage could have read this, but I feel like the ice mage should be the one to control the freezers. Just role playing wise. So there we go. It's a challenge, uh, channeled spell. So as you can see, his magic pool sucks because he's soothing, breezing, and magic cooling. And um, this room is not dropping much in temperature at all. So probably going to dismiss that and have to create a second freezer. Uh, 
The issue is I don't really have a good spot for the second freezer. What I could do is, um, and I'll just plan it out. I could have a hallway go like this instead, giving this area for a freezer. I think that's the most reasonable. So I'll start excavating for potential freezer because uh, the, the temperature of this room is not budging much at all. It's too large and I don't want to tie up all of his mana pool uh, casting multiple man mana cool magical coolers. I mean, I know I can, but I, yeah, I'm not going to. So I'm trying to think of the other spells, right? So we did want uh, potentially Guerrero to have sunlight, so I will make a sunlight spell. Um, there is the ice spell of moisturized ground, turning sand into usable soil, which I don't think we really need. So the current priority is to make a book for Guerrero and improve defenses. But also scribe, it doesn't fit at the moment. But the defenses are uh, are almost done. We just need a little bit more smoothing. So there's the sunlight spell. So the other spells we want, let's see. Blink would be a good one for Jayfry to learn, although he doesn't really have the mana. So another thing to consider is we might want to um, figure out like an affordable uh, sort of garment configuration for our mages so that they uh, they are all dressed the same with the you know and have roughly the same abilities uh, I could stick the cooler in a small room to test capability sure so Jfry let's dismiss the cooler and we will cool this bedroom. Uh, actually, cool your own bedroom. Bedroom is now well below freezing. 20, like f five below freezing. So yeah, it, it's fine. It just doesn't work in a large room. Oh, an exotic goods trader. Well, I have a lot of the exotic goods, so I don't mind if I do. We have got the tusks, the antlers, and the elephant. Oh, yeah, they don't have that kind of money. Yeah, so... I'll buy a heart, though. Saves me the effort of harvesting another one. There we go. So, other scribing. There's magic heaters, the inverse, which we um, probably won't need to use because we just use good old coal power. The mana shield would be pretty good for some of our casters. Same with like siphon mana. Or potentially even teleport. There's altar storm. Teaches an ice mage how to alter the conditions of a storm to produce various effects. Uh, there's also Blizzard. And then there's the Summon Poppy. That uh, So these require Devil Strand. So we're waiting on those. That's why I'm not really looking at them. But the ultimate abilities. So these abilities here. Summon Poppy. Meteor. Scorn. Blizzard. These are all Devil Strand requiring ones. Um, which we will absolutely use...
once uh, once we have the double strand to actually scribe that stuff. Um, yeah, I, I think a cooler reasonably can cool down at five by five. That would be a good assertion, I would say. And then we would just pile in our most vulnerable to heat um, materials into the uh, five by five. Double insulated, probably five by five, with maybe even a um, airlock door or something. I'll figure it out. But it's getting colder in the season, so I don't really need the, all these passive coolers anymore. Save myself the fuel. So the current priority right now is actually make a book for Guero and um, the freezer. So, uh, it is getting colder. And the word that I have is the Devil Strand growth rate. So what I could do is I could summon a heat wave. Because right now it's growing, but it is getting colder. Uh, so so I really have two choices here as far as I, I see. One is that I, um, I summon a heat wave to allow this to continue growing as if it was an artificial summer. And then the other one is to wall it up and then give the sunlight spell to someone else other than Guero, because Guero isn't a mage yet. So how should I deal with the double strand? Have you guys decide before it gets too cold. I'm also going to suspend the mining coal chunks because I need them to excavate here. They're preferring to work in the mines. Thank you, Turnip. One of the other advantages is some of this is actually overhead mountain, although the freezer part won't be. Mm. Gifts. An enchanted visage mask and a steel padded nasal helm. How is this enchanted? Uh, I don't see an enchantment. Hey, Goro, put this on. I think it's made of enchanted wood. Is that it? Mm, all right. Well. You are a green goblin now. Just don't be going after Spider-Man. Oops, uh, that's not what I meant to click. Oh well. He'll level up some more. So the defenses are getting smoothed out. And then they'll be done for now. Um, shield, let's have you mine over construct so that we can finish this quicker. I like how J Fry just ended up putting it on. Okay, you guys, uh, I'm going to call this. It's overwhelmingly you want me to summon a heat wave. So let's see about that. Summoning a heat wave is 100 marriage light and 200 timber. So I'll store it here. Not furniture timber. Uh, what is it? Timber. Let's 
So gear repair wouldn't be a terrible spell to have for the fighters as well. But I would probably want to figure out a standard set of gear. Thick skin would be pretty good as well uh, to increase armor values. Sprint would be a good one to have. Maybe even fighters focus. Um, hmm. J Fry, I meant to teach you blank. Why are they stacked on one another? Great. Read or read. Uh, I, I don't want to play 50 50 here, so let's put the blink spell here. It'd be great if there was context of what I am reading. <laughs> Okay, so we have, uh, I need a little bit more timber, but we have the Magisite. And we're going for the heat wave. So this is, uh, some of this is actually almost harvestable. But once Squirrel becomes a full-fledged mage, we can have a full uh, year-round grow operation for Double Strand and other sensitive materials like um, uh, Parasite Thornbush. That would be another good one to have a permanent. So what I could do is I could summon the light here and then figure out the range of the light and then wall it in and, and add hearths to it so that it's uh, efficient. I could also do Mage Spell Mending. It's only really going to be worth it if there's gear worth mending. And I think only really Tal has gear worth mending at the moment. But that might change over time. Alright, so let's do this. Heat Wave. Bring three mages over. They have enough mana, I think. How much mana does it say it has? 50 each? Yeah, they have enough mana. Need port fuel. You have the port fuel. What do you mean? There we go. Uh, what are you grabbing? Oh, I like forgot some of the timber. Oh, because I had 90 of the 100. Okay. That's my fault, but it's so annoying that it's like, sorry, you're missing 10 timber. So spells canceled. It's like game. Thomas, where did you run off to? Get over here. Wait, now what? What materials are you possibly... Oh, wait, it's 200? Yeah, I'm really bad at math. We'll, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> I brought 150 to a 200 cast. Come on. They're particular about the grain of wood. Yeah, it's got to be old growth timber, right? All right, let's do this again. Patience is not their strong suit. Yes, correct. That's why I haul the materials over, because if you don't, they're just like, all right, I'm done. And they, they piss off real quick. All right, heat wave has been casted. Nice. They gain some experience for the ordeal and apparently some food. And we have ourselves a little heat wave where it is now the correct temperature for proper double strand growth. So successful. Thank you for watching RimWorld Death of the Isle, which originally streamed live on Twitch, March 3rd. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. 
If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Radamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. Hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow followers of Sauron.